Hi everyone, today I'm going to talk about the free surface modeling using the volume of fluid method. Uh, in this presentation, first I'm going to answer the question that what is a free surface? Uh, after that, the free surface boundary conditions are presented. Next, I talk about the free surface modeling in CFD and finally the volume of fluid approach is presented in uh, detail. The free surface exists between two immiscible flow phases, namely water and air, which originates from the large difference in the densities of the flow phases. In the case of water and air, air is about 830 times less dense than water. Uh, due to this difference in densities, the inertia of the air can be generally ignored in comparison with uh, water. Okay, So modeling a free and moving surface brings some serious complications. Uh, special approaches are required to define its properties along with the effect that it introduces in flow. On the free surface, two conditions exist, uh, the kinematic and dynamic boundary conditions. Uh, the kinematic condition uh, considers that the particles of the fluid never leave the free surface. To explain uh, further this condition, uh, consider the following figure. Uh, the kinematic free surface boundary condition states that the fluid particles on the free surface should follow the vertical motions of the free surface. In other words, the normal component of the velocity of the fluid at the surface is equal to the normal component of the velocity of the free surface. Mathematically, this uh, can be written as follows. Okay, W is uh, shown here. Okay, in this equation, uh, W in fact is the normal component of the velocity of the fluid at the surface. Okay, and the derivative uh, of eta with respect to time is the uh, normal component of the velocity of the free surface. In addition, the dynamic free surface condition states that the pressure at free surface is constant and equal to the atmospheric pressure, which mathematically can be written as follows. In this respect, uh, there are two main approaches to impose these conditions in CFD, interface tracking and interface capturing methods. CFD uh, uses two main approaches to model the free surface interface tracking and interface capturing methods um, let's first talk about the interface tracking method uh, the following figure shows an example of a grid used in an interface tracking method okay as can be inferred the interface uh, tracking method uh, which is also called the Lagrangian grid method uses a Lagrangian grid uh, to define the free surface as an interface and follows its evolution over time. Therefore, the free surface is regarded as a boundary and then the kinematic and dynamic conditions are imposed directly upon this boundary. However, where uh, large amplitude surface motions exist, the interface tracking methods have difficulty to track the free surface without introducing remeshing techniques with respect to the new position of uh, free surface. The remeshing process signifies that the field values from the old mesh uh, must be projected to the to the new one. This is computationally costly and can be a source for errors. Okay, so uh, on the other hand, we have the interface capturing method, okay, which is also called the Eulerian grid method. Um, uh, this method captures a volume inside a fixed domain which contains the free surface. 
This figure here <coughs> shows an example of a grid used in an interface capturing method. As can be observed, contrary to the interface tracking method, the grid does not follow the free surface evolution over time. The volume of fluid approach, VOF, uh, which is one of the interface capturing methods requires reasonable computational resources and is robust enough to handle the problems such as uh, breaking waves, droplets and bubbles. So let's now talk more about the VOF method which is the focus of the present video. The VOF approach assumes that the, f that the mesh resolution is sufficient to resolve the position and the shape of the free surface. Therefore, it is uh, necessary to apply uh, proper local mesh refinement at the free surface. Uh, in this regard, as a rule of thumb, uh, the refinement normal to the undisturbed free surface uh, can be made by discretizing the free surface in this direction using nearly 10 to 30 cells per, uh, per wave height. Uh, moreover, the refinement parallel to the undisturbed free surface can be made by applying, uh, by applying uh, nearly uh, 80 to 120 cells per wave length. So the, the VOF method uses the fraction of the cell occupied by water indicated by uh, alpha underscore i, which is shown here, to locate the free surface. The alpha underscore i is defined as uh, this equation here. V here uh, V underscore i is the volume of water in the in the cell and V is the volume of the cell as shown uh, in the following figure. Therefore R underscore I is referred to as the water volume fraction. This figure here shows the uh, water free surface together with the values of alpha representing the, uh, the volume fraction of water in each cell. Okay, in, in this regard, um, the, the, the value of alpha equal to 1 indicates the cells fit with water, equal to 0 indicates the cells fit with air, as can be seen here, right? And cells where the value of alpha lays in the range from 0 to 1 contain the free surface. Okay. Uh, in this approach, both air and water phases are treated as a single phase that share velocity and pressure fields, uh, while their properties, including density and viscosity, vary according to the, to the values of alpha as follows. So a question remains to be answered. How we can calculate the values of alpha? The values of alpha are calculated by solving the following transport equation for the water volume fraction. Here V indicates the velocity vector. To avoid a smearing of the free surface, this transport equation for alpha has to be solved without excessive diffusion. Thus, the success of a VOF method depends heavily on the scheme used for the discretization of the convection of fraction function of underscore i, as shown here inside the red square. Therefore, to acquire a sharp interface, some special curves uh, must be taken to discretize this convection term, uh, since the value, value of alpha uh, underscore i must be bounded in a range from 0 to 1. In this regard, using the low order scheme such as the first order upwind scheme, uh, though fulfill the boundedness criterion, causes the surface uh, to become overly diffusive. 
while the while uh, the higher order schemes such as the second order central differencing cause the fraction function alpha to take values that are physically impossible since they violate the requirement of boundedness uh, uh, thus uh, it has been necessary to uh, to develop schemes which keep the free surface sharp while also produce monotonic profiles for alpha one such scheme uh, which uh, can be used for this purpose is the high resolution interface capturing scheme it is an algebraic scheme and is based on the normalized variable diagram uh, I have explained thoroughly the normalized variable diagram in another video in my channel entitled upwind schemes under strong convection okay uh, the normalized variable diagram basically is a plot which describes the locally normalized convected control volume phase variable with respect to the normalized adjacent upstream node variable to explain further consider the variation of the water volume fraction function alpha uh, along along a direction normal to a control volume phase F as shown in this figure note that the labeling of node of uh, node values downstream D central C uh, and upstream U depends on the normal velocity direction as shown here as of course does the choice of node for alpha underscore u so uh, first let's define the locally normalized variable as follows okay uh, as can be observed to define the locally normalized variable the value of alpha at upstream and downstream nodes are used this figure here in terms of uh, of the normalized variables can be plotted as this figure here okay note uh, particularly that in terms of normalized variables uh, the normalized value of alpha at upstream is zero and at uh, downstream is equal to one so uh, by using the normalized variable diagram it is possible to define the normalized control volume phase value at phase F as a function of the normalized adjacent upstream node value at cell C in other words we are able to define uh, this variable as a function of this variable here it is uh, worthy uh, to highlight that the main reason to use the normalized variable diagram is to ensure that the boundedness criterion is satisfied in the discretization of the convective term in the transport equation of the water volume fraction function. If this criterion is satisfied at every point in the domain, the entire solution is free of, is free of uh, non-physical oscillations. so uh, let's now talk about the high resolution interface capturing scheme which as mentioned earlier is based on the normalized variable diagram okay and the high resolution interface capturing scheme defines the normalized phase value at phase f based on the normalized adjacent upstream node value at node c as follows okay we can see here uh, to have a better understanding of this scheme the normalized phase values obtained from this scheme is shown in the following plot as a function of the normalized adjacent upstream node value okay we can see here the high resolution interface capturing scheme is shown here uh, 
Okay, this plot is the so-called normalized variable diagram. Additionally, for uh, comparison purposes, this plot also shows uh, the values of normalized phase values predicted by the first order upwind scheme, okay, second order upwind scheme, and third order upwind scheme, which is also referred to as the quick scheme. Uh, both the second order and third order upwind schemes pass through the point uh, 0 0.5 and 0 0.75 labeled as, as Q. The first order upwind scheme passes through the origin O and the point P at 1 and 1. Lanard 1988 uh, shows that any scheme whose plot passes through the second quadrant uh, second quadrant which uh, is located here right uh, may produce unphysical oscillations which may occur to some extent with uh, quick uh, under high convection conditions as this scheme uh, as we can see passes through the second quadrant right Additionally, the schemes which pass through the fourth quadrant, here is the fourth quadrant, uh, are artificially diffusive, thus to avoid both the unphysical oscillations and the artificial diffusiveness, the schemes must, must pass through the origin O. Further, the schemes passing above the point P, above the point P here, uh, are oscillatory in two dimensions, okay, um, which is the case for the second order upwind scheme and the quick scheme, right? Uh, similarly, passing below P gives artificially diffusive numerical results. So the schemes must pass through uh, the point P either, okay? Therefore, to achieve the sharpness of the free surface without overshoots and undershoots, the approximation of the control volume phase value must be limited to lie in the shaded area of the normalized variable diagram, which is uh, shown here. This is the shaded area. Okay. Uh, now let's talk about the high resolution interface capturing scheme. Okay, uh, as can be observed, for the values of the normalized adjacent upstream node smaller than zero and larger than one, smaller than zero and larger than one, the high resolution interface capturing scheme uses the first order upwind scheme. Okay, although this scheme is diffusive and it smears the free surface, it ensures the boundedness criterion. Additionally, for the values of the normalized adjacent upstream node between 0 and 0 0.5, as shown here, the high-resolution uh, interface capturing scheme employs a linear function whose slope is larger than the second-order upwind scheme, okay? Uh, the plot is shown here, okay, for the values of... Uh, for the values of... Uh, of the normalized adjacent upstream node between 0 and 0 0.5 the high resolution interface capturing scheme uses a linear function okay whose slope is larger than the second order upwind scheme further uh, for the values of the normalized adjacent upstream node uh, smaller than 1 and larger than 0 0.5 the downwind differencing scheme is utilized to ensure a compressive behavior in order to guarantee the sharpness of the free surface. The face value at surface F, uh, which is obtained uh, here, is then corrected based on the local current number C underscore U. Okay, for uh, to account for the availability criterion, which states that in a time step, the quantity of a fluid convecting through a phase is less than or equal to the quantity of the fluid available in the donor cell. Okay, 
as shown here in, in this equation. Here C underscore U L and C underscore U U uh, as we can see here uh, are in fact user adjustable parameters to control the blending of high resolution interface capturing scheme and the first order upwind scheme. <coughs> Therefore, based on this equation, where the current number is less than C underscore UL, uh, high resolution interface capturing scheme is used, and where the current number is in the range between C underscore UL and C underscore UU, a combination of high resolution interface capturing scheme and the first order of win scheme is employed and finally uh, where the current number is larger than c underscore u u only the upwind method is used okay uh, for problems with a steady state solution in order to take advantage of the features of high resolution interface capturing scheme it is recommended to specify these user uh, adjustable parameters c underscore u l and c underscore u u values higher than the uh, than the current number encountered in the simulation why because this way we guarantee the utilization of the high resolution interface capturing scheme in the entire computational domain for instance uh, the following figures show the simulations of the free surface wave system of an underwater vehicle uh, moving along a straight path right beneath the free surface using uh, both the high resolution interface capturing scheme on the right hand side and the first order upwind scheme on the left hand side. It can be clearly observed that while the first order upwind scheme smears the free surface, uh, the high resolution interface capturing scheme simulates the free surface with a much higher resolution. The formation of a, a Kelvin type wave pattern can be clearly identified in the case of the high resolution interface capturing scheme. The final correction is introduced in the, into the normalized phase uh, value at phase F in accordance with the angle theta enclosed by the vector normal to the interface which is defined as the gradient of the water volume fraction and the vector normal to the surface uh, of the surface as follows as this equation. The definition of the angle theta is shown in the following figure. As can be seen, this angle theta uh, is the angle enclosed by the vector normal to the uh, to the interface, which is defined as the gradient of the water volume fraction, and the vector normal to the surface to the surface of the surface. Okay. Um, so uh, in in this equation, c underscore theta is uh, which is called the angle factor is a user adjustable parameter. The value of this parameter sh uh, should be increased for simulations where where the free surface does not follow the grid lines. Note that the reason to use this last correction is to prevent the alignment of the free surface with the numerical grid. Okay. Finally, the value of alpha underscore f on the face f is calculated uh, using this equation. So the summary of what I talked about in this video, we learned that what a free surface is and how it originates from the large difference between the densities of the flow phases. We also learned about the free surface boundary conditions. We understood how CFD models the free surface using uh, the interface tracking and interface capturing techniques. And finally, we learned in a comprehensive manner uh, how the VOF method captures the uh, free surface. 
this is the end of this video I hope you found this video useful please let me know what you think about this video by leaving a comment in the comment section thank you for watching the video and for further upcoming videos please subscribe to this channel